<clears throat> Anyways, uh, I woke up at five in the morning and I drank my coffee while the, well, I missed the, I missed the, the sunrise, but it was really nice. It was really nice. I liked it. And I went for a walk with my dog. And we got some free, <laughs> some free stuff. And then I had to put like three coins on the serendipity thing because it was exactly what I asked for. Uh, I was like, oh, sh very surprising and very specific. Like it was really insane. Like yesterday I went crazy cleaning my house again, but mainly clean, cleaning Gio's bathroom because it was just driving me crazy and it was disgusting and unorganized, partly because of me, because I put my makeup all over the place. But he never like wipes down the counters and he loses a lot of hair. So it's like, so I was cleaning it and underneath um, there's an empty space where he just throws his clothes, like his dirty clothes. And I was like, I really need something to organize his clothes and like put it in there and make it look nice. And then today when I went out, someone was throwing away, like they left it in the rain, a perfectly good uh, laundry sorter. And I was like, what? So I took it and I was like carrying it. And I was like, I hope nobody sees me because it looks like I'm stealing. Because it's perfectly brand new. There's nothing wrong with it. And I was like, well, they're going to throw it away. So I'm just going to take it. <laughs> so yeah. Insane. But honestly, uh, today is the science thing, but I really don't feel like reading. <laughs> uh I'm, I'm 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 not tired it just it takes a lot of my mental focus to read um i do want to do the david bowie thing but i think what should we do what how should we handle this well i can talk about a few projects that i have uh you know um so i wrote in high school, in junior year, an 80 page story. <clears throat> I think I wrote it all in one night too. I, I think I went all out. An 80 page story that had to do with uh, a lot of things. Like, I'm trying to think, my mind's like, My mind's not awake yet. So it was an 80 page story just to express my view on life at the time, my, my perspective. Uh, but I was also very, like it was, it was kind of like a weird thing because I was living in North Carolina and um, living in Miami and going to school in Miami, like it was constantly like a depression state. And then moving to North Carolina, I was, a, I sort of escaped my abusive aunt. Actually, she's my mother's aunt, but like, I just, whatever. So we left her, but she was, this is how like crazy she is. She was trying to come live with us as our neighbor. And my sister and I were trying to absolutely keep that from happening because the whole reason why we wanted to move was so we wouldn't be abused, right? But she was literally like, I'm gonna move with you. And we were like, we don't want you here. Like, leave us alone. And my mom was like, how can you be so rude to your aunt? And I was like, que pinga, man. Like, you obviously don't give a shit what's going on. But anyways, 
<clears throat> so she was trying to move in, move like right next door to our new house. And we were like, no, like we're going to try to like, you know, we, we literally like when she was looking at the houses and talking to the realtor, we're like, we don't want this lady to move in. Like we went up to the realtor and we told her the situation. Like we were like, this, this woman is crazy. And the realtor was probably like really fucking surprised, but we're like, we have no one else to go to because obviously my mom is just, <laughs> it's all good. Cause you, you know, like, so we told the realtor, we're like, this woman is fucking insane. Like, please don't sell her a house. Like, don't, you know, <clears throat> and my aunt heard it. And then she told my mom to tell us. And we're like, we really don't give a shit at this point. Like, we're tired of it. Like, please just no. And thankfully, I guess she was, she was hurt by what we said, which is awesome because I don't give a fuck. You know, I really don't give a fuck if she's hurt her little feelings, you know? So anyways, so we had that freedom of not having the manipulation of the matriarch of my family, you know? <clears throat> she was still involved, but like not like directly there. She literally, in Miami, she lived right down the road from us. Like she could just walk to our house. Anyways, excuse me. So I, we finally were free of the craziness and um, my attitude sort of changed. Like I was like, because I, I found my, my fiance there, like, you know, he was really sweet. He was really kind. He was actually a really big protector. Like, you know, I also was attracted and chose him to be my boyfriend because he was really big and intimidating. He was six, four, Sorry, this cat pissed me off earlier. He he bit me, and I'm not tolerating it today. No. Yeah. I spray them. I spray him with this. It's actually really like it's all natural, so it's it, but it's it smells really good. <clears throat> I clean my house with it. Anyways, yeah. So. <sighs> So yeah, that's part of the reason why I chose my my boyfriend Brian, also because he was German mix, German American. So it was really, really interesting. He was six three, or he is six three, and uh, very big dude. So like nobody would fuck with me when he was around, which was a saving grace, thank God, because people love to like pick me up and you know like I. It's just this weird thing that people like to do. Not anymore, because, like, I'll beat the shit out of them. But, like, when I was in high school, literally, like, the bigger bigger guys would, like, pick me up and place me. Like, some people tried to, pl like, there was bullying, too. Like, place me in the garbage. And I was like, the fuck are you doing? Like, you know? like, And I couldn't do anything because, obviously, I'm not as, I wasn't as uh, physically fit and I didn't want to get violent either because I had so much violence in my life, like so much anger and violence done to me. Like I never wanted to do it to anyone, but obviously that's not right either. So anyways, so uh, yeah, so the, the atmosphere changed, you know, like it was like a lot more cleaner and I was happier, like I had happy moments. I made friends, you know, I made new friends because making friends is easy for me. And, you know, like we, we, we did rebellious shit. So I got to do that. And, you know, that made me happy because, you know, I had no outlet in Miami um, because it's dangerous to go out at night alone. So, <clears throat> you know, we were a group of people just doing stuff at night, like just being rebellious. And that was the first time that I finally like, <laughs> I finally like stopped giving a shit what my mom thought about everything because I, I did like try to respect her for a very long time. And then at that point I was like, 
I don't want to, I don't want to say anything bad about my mom, but I was like, you know what, like, this is just insane. Like, I'm just, I'm just going to live my life. So I remember actually, I'm, I know this is kind of a rant, but this relates to the story, I promise. Um, my friends and I were out really, really late and I had a curfew of like 9 p.m. with my mom. And I ended up like staying out until 3 a.m. in the morning for the first time ever. It was like, and uh, when I got home, uh, it was intense. But, you know, it was it was really like what I needed to do, like rebel, like, you know, because I think the, the problem was that in reality, I don't think that at the time my mom deserved any respect for everything that she allowed. And I just did it because I respect people, you know. But anyways, so 3 a.m., I was like, oh, shit, I'm a rebel. And then, you know, I got the opportunity to uh, write stories in school, actually. I think this, the, the thing that got me started was we had to write a fictional story for class. You know, I think it was either a horror story or no, we just had to write a story. And I ended up writing a very ghosty not ghosty it was like it's my writing style so we all had to read our stories and everyone was like super impressed and I was like oh oh you like it you know um they were like wow like your story is so good so that story I still have I think I hope it was basically about uh Saint Augustine and how um it wasn't completely true, but like, it was also like the setting was St. Augustine on the beach with a broken uh, church, a church that had many um, stained glass windows where the light would come through. I'm a very visual writer. So like I wrote all that, like, and people could visualize it. Me, I'm just like, I don't, I, I it's, it's been a long time. So um, it was about a woman who went there and there was a, there was a haunting, there was a ghost. And uh, I'm not gonna spoil the ending, but like, <clears throat> it was kind of like, it was interesting. So anyways, it's somewhere in one of my binders somewhere or one of my sketchbooks, I, I would have to delve for it. It's, it, I write so much and I have so much content like, it's insane. But anyways, back to the story after everyone encouraged me like, oh, my God, that's good. Because like, I never had encouragement from my parents. And I'm not crying. I'm just like, there's a booger in my nose or something. Um, my parents were very flippant. Yeah, I like the word. Like, I would literally show them my art. And they'd be like, that's nice. And then so like, I never had encouragement any way with my family. Um, so when I was encouraged, I was like, oh shit, like I actually am pretty good at this. So I decided to write a 80 page story. It only turned out to be 80 pages. Cause I was like, oh shit. Like, I don't, I don't know how to write, um, a very, like a book. I don't know how to write a book. So 80 pages of saucy material, uh, so anyways, it's, the story basically is a story about a woman who cannot die, but she wants to die, right? So she's uh, essentially immortal and she's like, why can't I die? Um, I've tried so many times in different ways and I still can't die. Like, what's the reason, right? And um, I have some thumbnails they're not the best and I just realized I didn't put this the right way um I can show you these because this is old art and it's gonna change when I make it final but um this is like the most this is the first chapter the important important scene where she wakes up 
and she's in a forest and uh, it's kind of hard for you to understand because it's not the best thumbnail, but trying to hide the bottom. You can't see the title. But um, yeah, so <clears throat> in the back, you're not gonna understand this because it's like really loose. But anyways, so yeah, she's constantly trying to kill herself and she lives, you know, like, can you tell why? Like I wrote it like that. But this also had to do with my spiritual beliefs that um, there was more to life. Um, I wasn't very spiritual at the time, but I did have like some interesting views on immortality and spirituality and like stuff like that. But I was like, kind of like, eh. So, you know, she's killing, she, she's tried to kill herself and then she meets one of the characters who <coughs> uh, is very interesting and I think he's well written, you know, but she finds out like why, the reason why she can't. And the reason why is essentially like, she's an immortal soul so uh, 80 pages of craziness. Uh, I'm rewriting it because it was more like an erotic fan fiction, but not. And it really has to change. Like I have to really like put my new uh, writing and my maturity into it because, uh, you know, I wasn't as, um, what is it? Dic dictated dic diction. My mind's waking up. Ooh. Um, no, that's not the right word. Uh, I didn't have a lot of diction and I wasn't as enunciated so hard uh, when it came to writing or speaking actually. So, um, so I have to add more content and more flavor because it's just very basic. I know what I was trying to say, but if a reader was like, eh, you know, it wouldn't be as imp impressive as other things that I've written now. And um, I'm not sure where this story is going because 80 pages is just like, probably like three chapters, maybe less. <sighs> Insane, I know. Um, I swear to God, Kat, you, my patience with you. <clears throat> You know, I know he wants attention, but he really just did not have to bite me. Like, it was really unnecessary. Um, so, yes, in my mind, I already know the scenery, you know. Uh, and I know the colors, and I know, like, the lighting and, like, everything. Um, so I'm excited. And I would read some of this. Actually, I should, but it's not up to par <laughs> right now. But it's like this big, like that's that's 80 pages of <laughs> work. And I lost those files actually. I, I lost the original Word document. So I have to retype it, which I'm not looking forward to, but it's fine. I don't care. So yes, um, the stories that I write are usually about duality, spirituality, uh, death, suicide, uh, the meaning of life. Um, usually I want people to think more about things like why, like basically social norms, like why is this a social norm? You know, why do people think that this is impossible? You know, um, when clearly when we write fiction, 
um, you know, people go nuts. Like, you know, people live in the fantasy world. Why is that possible in fantasy, but not possible in reality? You know, so it's it's something that I I like to bring up. Because essentially, if you think about it, the reality is whatever, how do we say it? Your, your, your thoughts create reality. So when you read something and you consume it and you think about it, you're making it a reality. Is that how you say it? So this fantasy and this nonfiction you know, what is the blurred line? Like, you know, so yeah, um, 80 pages of creations. Uh, a lot of the characters, let's see, most of my characters are women. Um, I would like to write in the perspective of a, a, of a man, but like, I don't live that life. So I don't know their perception. So it's like really complex to write like that. But it would be cool um, to write some of my, because I, I do have male characters. I have female male and sorry, a bird was like, I've never heard it before. Anyways, um, I do have really intense and really descriptive male characters. And um, it would be nice to have some stories where it's like, you know, those books where they have the female view and then they have the male view, like to contrast what they're thinking. I like that. Um, and I would like to write it one day because it, it adds to the story. You know, so like it would be nice to have like I have a character, I have a story, and for sure I know this is like a past life because people have like affirmed it randomly. Like I wasn't trying to affirm it; like I already knew, but they were like, "Oh yeah," and I was like, "Oh." No. But I had a story about a character, a female character who she's in Egypt, and a male character who is um very intense. Uh, he's also Egyptian, but he's like, he's a, what do they call the Egyptian, a magician, I guess, the court, I don't know. I don't know much about what they call their, their shamans and what, the t what the title is. Let me look it up. I really don't know, but basically the person that um, prepared people for death was essentially, I believe, also a shaman. I like this picture. Yeah. Um, need attention? You already, what's up? All right. So yeah, so he's a shaman and he was, okay, distracted by this dog. <laughs> so he's a shaman and um, the story is about like twin flames, but like it would be nice to see what he went through because in the story, um, it was only the perspective of the main character who's a woman, a young woman in Egypt and her point of view when her whole situation, um, you know, kind of turns for the worse. 
like essentially the story is that she was nobility in Egypt and her father fucked up with the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh was threatening him. And he was like, oh, I'm just gonna give you my daughter because that was a customary thing. Like uh, she's property. So, you know, and that, you know, was like, okay, because she manipulated the situation so that she wouldn't be the person marrying the Pharaoh. It was her sister and said, and then, I know I'm going crazy with this story. Um, you know, she ended up being a servant going to Egypt in the Pharaoh's palace, you know, being anonymous. Um, and then she meets the love of her life who is the shaman. And very saucy. <clears throat> and I also go all out with like the sexual thing. It's not like, what is the, the worst sexual writing, like popular? Fifty Shades of Grey um, and Twilight. Because weren't they, weren't they inspired by each other? Like sh the lady read Twilight and she's like, I'm gonna write some BDSM bullshit um, because it is bullshit. It's not how domination works, but anyways. Um, so yeah, that has no flavor compared to what I write. Uh, because it's like super tantric, you know, like whatever. I can't explain it. Someone has to read it. Um, but yeah, that story. And then, yeah, so the, the whole thing is in Egypt. Um, and like, I can see it clearly in my mind what Egypt looked like. Because what we know of Egypt now, or before, we thought Egypt was... Uh, you know, like when you look at the pyramids, there's no color, but the color faded because it was um, the the type of painting that they used to decorate their architecture was natural. So it fades over time with light. And that usually happens with everything that isn't a chemical. So the Egypt that I see in my mind is very colorful and very crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. Mind you, I've never been to Egypt. I've never seen their architecture, but I clearly can see it in my mind. Um, crazy. So yeah, that story is very, really intense and really sexual. Like all my stories have sex in it. Like that's just part of life. Like that's part of it. Uh, this one though, one that I was talking about earlier, I don't remember if I did write anything sexual because it was kind of like, it was a different story. Um, hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Um, because the belief in spirituality is that the soul can take any form, right? What are you doing? Why are you scratching the door? Do you want to go out again? Now she wants to go. Thank God she wants to go out because be, because of 4th of July after the fireworks, she refused to go outside, like to go to the bathroom. What? Okay, we're going to go out. Just give me a second. Okay, stop, don't scratch me. Um, so yeah, so the belief in spirituality is that the soul can take any form because it's energy. So everyone can take any form they want and they can split themselves as many times as they want. So it's like really complex. And I have to go because she's she's gonna harass me. She's, she's already crying. But yeah, I will probably not post another video because I have friends coming over. But yes, uh, stories, lots of stories everywhere. Stories like in every book, crazy. One thing though, if someone decides to read my stories, they have to prepare themselves because it's like, 
It's very saucy. I'm just going to say saucy and erotic. <laughs>